Chapter two, the mattress on the ceiling. Barnaby was discharged from hospital three days later and brought home to meet Henry and Melanie for the first time. Your brother's a little different to the rest of us, Alistair told them over breakfast that morning, choosing his words carefully. I'm sure it's only a temporary thing, but it's very upsetting. Just don't stare at him, all right? If he thinks he's getting a reaction, it will only encourage his foolishness. The children looked at each other in surprise, unsure what their father could possibly mean by this. Does he have two heads? asked Henry, reaching for the marmalade. He liked a bit of marmalade on his toast in the mornings, although not in the evenings. Then he preferred strawberry jam. No, of course he doesn't have two heads, replied Alistair irritably. Who on earth has two heads? A two-headed sea monster, said Henry, who had recently been reading a book about two-headed sea monster named Orko, which had caused any amount of mayhem beneath the Indian Ocean. I can assure you that your brother is not a two-headed sea monster, said Alistair. Does he have a tail? asked Melanie, gathering up the empty bowls and stacking them neatly in the dishwasher. The family dog, Captain W. E. Johns, a canine of indeterminate breed and parentage, looked up at the word tail and began to chase his own around the kitchen, spinning in a circular direction until he fell over and lay on the floor, panting happily, delighted with himself. Why would a baby boy have a tail? asked Alistair, sighing deeply. Really, children, you have the most extraordinary imaginations. I don't know where you get them from. Neither your mother nor I have an imagination at all, and we certainly didn't bring you up to have one. I'd like to have a tail, said Henry thoughtfully. I'd like to be a two-headed sea monster, said Melanie. Well, you don't, snapped Alistair, glaring at his son. And you aren't, he added, pointing at his daughter. So let's just get back to being normal human beings and make sure this place is spick and span, all right? We have a guest coming this morning, remember? But he's not a guest, surely, said Henry, frowning. He's our little brother. Yes, of course, said Alistair, after only the briefest of pauses. It was a little over an hour later when Eleanor pulled up outside in a taxi, holding a restless Barnaby in her arms. You've got a lively one there, said the driver as he turned the engine off. But Eleanor ignored the remark as she disliked getting into conversations with strangers. 